there is no compulsion in religion, the right way is indeed clearly distinct from error. So whoever disbelieves in the devil and believes in Allah, he indeed lays hold on the firmest handle which shall never break. And Allah is hearing, knowing. And fight in the way of Allah against those who fight against you. But be not aggressive. Surely Allah loves not the aggressors. Permission to fight is given to those on whom war is made because they are oppressed and surely Allah is able to assist them, those who are driven from their homes without a just cause except that they say our Lord is Allah. The words in the last quoted verse from chapter Hajj in which permission to fight is granted show clearly that war was first made on the Muslims by their opponents. And secondly, that the Muslims had already suffered great oppression at the hands of their persecutors. The words of the next verse, that is, those who are driven from their homes refer to their emigration to Abyssinia or to the exodus to Medina, which commenced soon after a group from Medina accept Islam at the hands of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at a secret place called Aqaba and swore allegiance that they shall provide protection to him to the fullest extent. The word jihad is derived from jahad or johad meaning ability, exertion of power and jihad or mujahida means the exerting of one's power in repelling the enemy. This is according to Imam Raghid. The same authority then goes on to say jihad is of three kinds. The carrying on of a struggle, number one against a visible enemy, number two against the devil and number three against the self which in the Quran is called nafs. Nehaya and Lane's lexicon have given almost the same meaning. Jihad is therefore far from being synonymous with war. Thus the meaning of war undertaken for the propagation of Islam, which is wrongly considered by European writers to be the significance of jihad, is unknown equally to the Arabic language and the teachings of the Holy Quran. The founder of the Ahmadiyya movement rightly foresaw the dangerous consequences of this wrong and extremist view and almost a hundred years ago strongly refuted and condemned this wrong and misleading meanings ascribed to the word jihad. And I quote from his important treatise on this sensitive issue for which he was duped as a British stooge by his own Muslim compatriots. It is entitled British Government and Jihad. He says, the issue of Jihad and its philosophy, as well as its true significance, is such a complex and subtle matter that as a result of lack of true knowledge of it, many people in the present age and even those in former times have made grave, grave errors in their interpretation of it. It is thus with great feelings of shame and embarrassment that we are forced to admit that because of these mistakes, the detractors of Islam have found a ready opportunity to cast aspersions on the pure and holy religion of Islam, which moreover is a mirror of the laws of nature and a genuine manifestation of the glory of the true living God. He further says, we must understand that the word jihad is derived from the word juhad, which means striving, and then figuratively it is used to refer to religious wars. It seems that the word yuddha, used by the Hindus to mean war, is really a corrupted version of jihad or juhad. As Arabic is the mother of all languages and all languages are derived from it, as a result, 
the word yuddha which signifies war in sanskrit is in fact johad or jihad the j in the arabic being changed into y in sanskrit and by a further alteration the d is doubled thus resulting in the word yuddha further taking talking about the grave consequences of this highly wrong and extreme view of the jihad the holy imam of the present time said firstly we have those maulvis in whose creed this teaching has infiltrated that to kill, kill a non muslim especially a christian is a cause for great blessings and through this act a person will enjoy such marvelous spiritual favors in paradise as cannot be obtained through prayer pilgrimage charity or any other righteous act he further says i know for a fact that these people are secretly filling the ears of the common people with this doctrine indeed by dint of listening to this false teaching day and night their emotions are aroused to such a pitch that there is hardly any difference between them and wild animals so powerful is this influence on their minds that they are becoming like bees not even an atom of compassion remains in their hearts and as a result of this mercilessness they are committing such grotesque murders that cause people to shiver in revulsion he further says finally let us remember that although i have very clearly written in this publication the present custom prevalent among muslims of attacking non muslims and which is called jihad is contrary to the jihad of the sharia more so it absolutely contravenes the commands of god his apostle sallallahu alaihi wasallam and it is a palpable transgression but since in many muslim countries this practice is firmly upheld and has become a deeply rooted habit it has now therefore become difficult to relinquish it easily perhaps whoever gives such advice may be considered a deadly enemy and with war like ferocity they may wish to put a swift end to him and i unquote unfortunately the arabic word jihad has become synonymous with the provocative word holy war throughout the western world the fact is that the holy quran and the sunnah of the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam have used two distinct words jihad and qital the two words clearly define the nature of two struggles or exerting of mental and physical efforts to a great extent muslims themselves are also responsible for creating this wrong perception of jihad by resorting to relentless holy war against all non believers by their violent and terrorist act reactions we regularly observe media reports university classroom discussions and even english dictionaries accepting the word jihad as illustrating violence by muslims against non muslims considering it a religious duty this wrong view and the so called misperception is sustained all the more to the recent world events particularly the explosive situation in the middle east and preemptive aggressive acts of the western powers in afghanistan iraq libya and now in syria consequently militant islamic movements taking advantage of the situation have resorted to oppressive underground activities like attacks of 9/11 in usa and 7/7 in britain to further their political agenda in the name of islam it is primarily due to the misconstrued notion of jihad that a distorted version of the islamic faith is being instilled in the psyche of the west without taking the trouble of having in depth study of the political and religious implications it is very important that for the muslims in muslim intelligentsia to clarify the correct meaning of jihad as embedded in islamic terminology and to demonstrate the correct sense 
in which jihad was practiced in the early history of Islam. Briefly speaking, jihad means the exerting of one's power in repelling the enemy or in contending with an object of disapprobation. It carries a twofold significance in Islam, being applied to both the purely missionary activities of a Muslim and his defense of the faith when necessary in a physical sense. The first duty, the duty to invite people to Islam, is a permanent duty laid upon all Muslims of all ages. While the second is a duty which arises upon certain contingencies. The Holy Quran calls attention to both these duties in the clearest and most forceful words. In the first place, it speaks of jihad to attain to Allah. It means to continuously exert against evil tendencies of the inner self and to purify oneself to do good acts for earning Allah's pleasure and also to be kind to fellow human beings. Then it speaks of carrying on a jihad against unbelievers by means of the Holy Quran and this is called Jihad and Kabira, a very great jihad. Islam's greatest jihad is therefore not by means of sword but by the means of the Holy Quran and that is a missionary effort to establish Islam. We are further told that there should always be among Muslims a party who invite people to Islam as the Quran says and from among you there should be a party who invite to good and enjoin the right and forbid the wrong and these are they who are successful. Chapter 3 verse 104. Thus the missionary jihad of Islam or jihad against self is to be carried on in all circumstances. This waging of continuous jihad has been clearly exhorted in the following verses of the Holy Quran and it says and whoever strives hard that is jihada strives yujahidu for his own self surely Allah is self-sufficient and above the needs of his creatures and those who believe and do good we shall certainly do away with their afflictions and reward them with the best of what they did. Chapter 29 verses 6 and 7 then further on, he indeed is successful who purifies it, and he indeed fails who corrupts it. Chapter 91, verses 9 and 19. Some Oriental scholars have tried to confuse the issue of jihad by saying that while in Meccan revelations, because of the peculiar circumstances, jihad with sword was not prescribed. But when the Muslims felt a bit secure in Medina, they were allowed to resort to sword. Let us briefly review the Meccan and Medina revelations in this context. It is very important to have correct understanding of the sense in which the word has been used in the Quran. It is admitted fact that permission to fight was given to the Muslims when they moved to Medina or at the earliest when they were on the eve of leaving Mecca. But the injunction relating to jihad is contained in the earlier as well as in the later Mecca revolutions, revelations. However, in Medina, Muslims were faced with altogether a changed situation where they were attacked to be wiped out. A struggle for national existence was forced on the Muslims and they had to take up sword in self-defense. This struggle went and rightly under the name of jihad but even in the Medina chapters, the word is used in wider sense of a struggle carried on by words or deeds of any kind. A very clear example of the word jihad being used in the above mentioned sense occurs twice. And it says, O Prophet, strive hard against the, un against the disbelievers and the hypocrites and the firm and be firm against them and their abode is hell and evil is the destination chapter 9 verse 73 chapter 66 verse 9 here the holy prophet is bidden to carry on a jihad against both unbelievers and hypocrites the hypocrites were those 
were outwardly Muslims and lived among and were treated like Muslims in all respects. They came to the mosque and prayed with the Muslims. They even paid the zakat. A war against them was unthinkable and none was ever undertaken. On the other hand, they sometimes fought along with the Muslims against the unbelievers. Therefore, the injunction to carry on a jihad against both unbelievers and hypocrites could not mean the waging of war against them. It was a jihad carried on by means of the Holy Quran as expressly stated in chapter 25 verse 52 is striving hard to win them over to Islam. In fact, it is a mistake to think that jihad means only fighting. The word is almost always used in the general sense of striving hard, including fighting with the context so retires, requires. For instance, Quran says, those who believe and those who fled their homes and strive hard in the way of Allah. Chapter 2, verse 218, chapter 8, verse 74 is a description which applies as much to the fighters as to those who carry on the struggle against unbelief and evil in other ways. And the Sabirin, those who are steadfast or patient, and Mujahidun, those who struggle hard, are again spoken of together in the Medina revelation as they are in the Mecca revelation. As the Quran says, do you think you will enter the garden while Allah has not yet known those from among you who strive hard, nor known the steadfast. Chapter 3, verse 141. Even in the Hadith literature, the word jihad is not used exclusively for fighting. For example, Hajj is called a jihad. The Holy Prophet is reported to have said, the Hajj is the most excellent of all jihads. Bukhari, chapter 25, Hadith 4. Of all the collection of Hadiths, Bukhari is the most explicit on this point. It records the saying of the Holy Prophet and, it's, and it is reported, A party of my community shall not cease to be triumphant, being upholders of truth, to which are added the words, and these are the men of learning, Ahle Ilm, Bukhari, Book 97, Chapter 10. Thus, Bukhari's view is that the triumphant party of the Holy Prophet's community does not consist of fighters alone, but of the men of learning who disseminate the truth and are engaged in the propagation of Islam. These headings show that up to the time of Bukhari, the word jihad was used in the wider sense in which it is used in the Holy Quran. Other books of Hadith contain similar references. It is only among the jurists that the word jihad lost its original significance and began to be used in the narrower sense of kital that is fighting. The reason is not far to seek. The books of jurisprudence, that is fiqh, codified the Muslim law and in the classification of the various subjects with which the law dealt, kital found a necessary place but invitation to Islam Though a primary meaning of the word jihad, being a matter of free individual choice, did not form the part of the law. The jurists who had to deal with Qital therefore used the word jihad as synonymous with Qital and by and by the wider significance of jihad was lost sight of through the commentators of the Holy Quran and accepted this significance when dealing with verses such as chapter 25, verse 52. But that was not the only misuse of the word. Together with this narrowing of the significance of jihad, the further idea was developed that the Muslims were to carry on a war against unbelieving nations and countries, whether they were attacked or not, an idea quite foreign to the Holy Quran. Thus the term jihad does not mean war primarily but striving to improve oneself morally and spiritually or striving to propagate the message of Islam. The Quran says, And those who strive hard for us, we shall certainly guide them in our ways, and Allah is surely with the doers of good.
चैप्टर ट्वेंटी नाइन वर्स सिक्सटी नाइन जहाद ऑफ डूइंग गुड डीड्स इज मैंशन बाय द होली प्रॉफिट मोहम्मद सल्लाम एज द बेस्ट जहाद ही इज रिपोर्टेड टू हैव सेल द मोस्ट एक्सीलेंट जहाद इज टू से वर्ड ऑफ ट्रूथ बिफोर एन अनजस्ट रूलर again a man came to the holy prophet and asked his permission for jihad he asked are you are your parents alive the man said yes he said then do jihad by serving them in short the concept of jihad put forward by the quran and practiced by the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions radhi allah taala anhum is to put an end to aggression and persecution to guarantee freedom of worship and interfaith harmony and above all to exert oneself against evil inclinations of the self so that the individual and the society as a whole live in peace and mutual love all this has been clearly and beautifully summarized in a single verse and it says there is no compulsion in religion the right way is indeed clearly distinct from error so whoever disbelieves in the devil and believes in allah he indeed lays hold on the firmest handle which shall never break and allah is hearing knowing chapter 2 verse 256 so brothers and sisters any killing or terrorist act done in an unjust manner against any individual or section of people who are not directly involved in any sort of war or aggression is not jihad in any sense of the word and it has nothing to do with the concept of jihad outlined in the quran and practiced by the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and should be condemned in thought and action such a person is bound to earn the wrath and displeasure of allah the subject of my friday khutbah today is which jihad leads to paradise let me quote the holy quran as to what is paradise and which acts lead one to paradise and entitles him to enjoy the blessings of paradise at the very start of the holy quran in chapter the cow it says and give good news to those who believe and do good deeds that for them are gardens or use the quranic expression jannat so mainly it is good deeds which entitle one to be in paradise In the second part of the khutbah throughout the Muslim world, the following verse of the Holy Quran is recited, and in my humble opinion, it reminds a Muslim what type of life a Muslim should lead. It is in fact a summary of the teaching of Islam. Just listen to the Arabic text and its English translation, and think over each word of it, and see if we Muslims, as we think and behave these days, are at all leading a life we should take us even near to the gates of paradise and the arabic text is inna allah ya'mur bil adl wa lisan wa itai dhul qurba wa janhan al fashai wal munkar wal baghy يَعِظُكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ and the translation is surely allah enjoins justice and the doing of good to others and the giving to the kindred and he forbids in decency and evil and rebellion he admonishes you that you may be mindful chapter 16 verse 90 Brothers and sisters, leave aside other commandments mentioned in this verse, each one of which is equally important. The word rebellion alone is of great significance these days, when we commit terrorist acts and unwarranted killing in the name of Islam, considering it a remarkable act, guaranteeing paradise in the next life. Brothers and sisters, leave aside what the Quran says about jihad. Leave aside how the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his righteous companions behaved during the battles fought to save the very existence of Islam and the Muslims. Just recall how the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's heart became restless when chicks of a bird were taken away from his her mother. 
how the Holy Prophet became desperate to see a thirsty camel, how a companion of the Holy Prophet وسلم, was given the name Abu Huraira, that is father of a cat, because he showed extreme kindness to a cat. And we who were ready to die for the love of the Holy Prophet وسلم, are so brutal and rebellious that we kill a soldier who came to spend his holidays with his parents. Is there not a clear instruction not to kill a non-combatant? Is it not a rebellion against Allah? Rebellion against our Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Rebellion against humanity and a rebellion against morality. The basic object of making the Friday service obligatory is to remind Muslims every week to be on the right path and to be foremost in maintaining justice to be kind to others, to be charitable to the near ones, to avoid indecency, evil, and especially rebellion. Ahmadiyya movement's slogan is back to the Quran, back to the, soul, to the Sunnah of the Holy Prophet Muhammad. And this is the only way which guarantees paradise, a peace within and a peace without.